Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another day that the Lord has blessed us. Hallelujah. I've been away from you for a little bit, praise God, but I haven't forgotten about you. I have not forgot about you. Hallelujah. This word is hot and it's heavy on my heart. Hey Amen. And I have not forgotten about you. We're going to make it through this Matthew. Amen. We're going to make it through the whole New Testament, praise God, as a matter of fact. Praise God. We're just cracking the door open. We're just scratching the surface of what God is getting ready to reveal to each and every one that partakes of this Bible study, amen, and of this teaching and this preaching and this ministry, praise God. We're just scratching the surface. Hallelujah. God is going to reveal himself to us even in a much more mightier way, praise God, for all of you and for me. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead into prayer. Praise God. Quickly. I'm not going to try to hold you long and I know a <laughs> uh, classic preacher. He always says, I'm not going to hold you and then mess around and you're there for an hour. But I promise, I promise, I'm not going to hold you long. Um, let's go into prayer right quick. Mm. Father God, in the blessed and holy name of Jesus, it is before your blessed, awesome, and omnipotent presence that we come, hallelujah, thanking you and glorifying you today, for this is the day that you have made, and we do rejoice, and we are glad in it. You said in your holy word, in Psalms, the 19th chapter, that creation declares the glory of God, and the firmament showeth your handiwork, day and the day utter speech, and night under night showeth knowledge. There are no language or speech where their voice is not heard, hallelujah. You said the law of the Lord is perfect. Perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart, and the commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever, and the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Your words are sweeter also than honey, hallelujah, and the honeycomb. Hallelujah. And David said later on in that psalm, hallelujah, the 19th chapter, the 14th verse, he said, let the words of my mouth, hallelujah, and the meditations of our hearts, oh God, be acceptable in thy sight, oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. For you are God. You have created us and not we ourselves. We are your people and we are the sheep of your pasture. We are thankful unto you and we bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. You said in your holy word also, hallelujah, in Psalms, the 24th chapter, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, of the world and we that dwell therein. For you have established it upon the seeds and founded it upon the floods, O God. Hallelujah, O God. Oh God, oh God, we thank you. Oh God, oh God, we magnify you, we glorify you, hallelujah, and we give you, hallelujah, all the praise and all the glory and all the worship that you are due. For you said you seeketh such to worship you. Now God, I thank you and I bless you for every heart and every soul, every house, every generation, every family, hallelujah, and every blessing that is represented here today. I ask that you touch, heal, deliver, save, and set free, lose all of your covenant blessings on us in a mighty, awesome, and omnipotent way. Bless us according to your holy word in Psalms 1. Protect us according to your holy word in Psalms 91. Give us all favor and dominion. Bless our health and our seed. And whatsoever we do, according to your holy will, let it prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh God, bless, hallelujah, and curse not. Open our minds and let us down into a well of wisdom and knowledge in your word. And we will be so careful to give your name the honor and the glory and the praise that it is due. Hallelujah. Bless my beautiful wife, hallelujah, on her birthday. And let this be one of many and many more, hallelujah, and let her be healthy and wealthy, and let her days fail not, and her strength fail not, hallelujah, and let everything that her hands touch, let it prosper, and let people be blessed in her presence, hallelujah, as she gives her gift to them, in Jesus' name I pray, amen, hallelujah, quickly, hallelujah, Matthew 5, we're going to start, we're going to crack open the door, hallelujah, of Matthew 5 this morning. Praise, praise God. He said, behold, I stand at the door of your hearts and knock, hallelujah. Matthew 5 is an incredible chapter, a, 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 just an incredible chapter. All the, the word of God is good, but Matthew 5 is an incredible chapter. Uh, we're not going to be able to, to do the discussion just in one sitting because it is that it, it is that detailed, it is that voluminous, it is. it just has that much um, substance to it that we won't be able to eat it all in one sitting. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over uh, the Beatitudes 
and speak about the significance of the Beatitudes this morning. Then we're going to get into something deeper because we're separating Matthew into two separate parts. The Beatitudes, which are blessings, and then we're going into uh, the commandments of Jesus Christ because he is God in flesh as he reiterates holiness, righteousness, moral behavior, and the just the the statutes and, and the commandments and the laws, hallelujah, uh, of God as they come from the Old Testament to the New Testament because he's saying, I don't give you any new commandment. A new commandment that I, I do, I not give you, he said, but love fulfills the whole commandment. So he's, he's reiterating things and I'm going to cross-reference the, the moral code that Jesus gives in Matthew 5 verses 18 through 48. I'm going to cross-reference that with one of the Pauline books, which is basically, it, it matches it perfectly. Hallelujah. I think it's uh, 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 Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the 22nd through the 32nd uh, verse. Hallelujah. And we're going to uh, link those up together. Amen. And then we're going to complete uh, the discussion on Matthew 5. Amen. So right quickly, praise God. Let me read to you. Now, we're just having a discussion um, of Matthew 5. I'm going to read to you quickly. Uh, the first 16 verses, and then we're going to um, uh, have a brief discussion, if time permits. I'm at six minutes, and I'm going to try not to go over 15 minutes, and then we'll be done. Amen. And your day will belong to you. Amen. Matthew 5. Hallelujah. Verse 1. If you want to turn there with me, you can. Hallelujah. If you just want to listen along, that's wonderful as well. Matthew 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hallelujah. Mm. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted were the prophets that were before you. Ye are the salt of earth. If the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and place it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And finally... Think that I am not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. The 17th verse denotes the separation of the content of Matthew 5. Because in the 17th verse, he begins to reiterate the Mosaic law. He begins to reiterate the concepts, excuse me, of the commandments, hallelujah, of moral behavior, of, of righteousness and holiness, hallelujah. And uh, he wants to go back over those between the 18th and the 48th verses. Amen. The code of conduct for believers, hallelujah, for the children of God, the Father, of the children of Jehovah, the children of Yahweh, the children of Yeshua. Amen. Praise God. And so we see in the first few chapters, and I'm going to read that to you. Hold one second.
Hallelujah. And I'm going to read the exposition. The Sermon on the Mount opens with the Beatitudes. Eight statements beginning with the word blessed. Amen. This word affirms a state of being blessed that already exists. Now, we know, or we may not know, but the word blessed means divinely I'm empowered to prosper. The word blessed, the definition of the word blessed means divinely empowered to prosper. Amen. Praise God. Now, the word affirms a state of blessing that already exists. Each beatitude, and each beatitude basically is a declaration that comes after Jesus says bless or blessed. And then it makes the statement and then draws a period and goes on to the next thought which is a separate beatitude. Amen. Each beatitude declares that a group of people usually regarded as afflicted is actually blessed. Amen. Praise God. Those blessed do not have to do anything to attain this blessing. Jesus simply declares that they have already been blessed. Thus, the beatitudes are first of all declarations of God's grace. They are not conditions of salvations, of salvation or roadmaps to earn entry into God's kingdom. Those who belong to each blessed group experience God's grace because the kingdom of heaven has come near. Consider the second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, Matthew 5 and 4. People do not normally think mourning as, of mourning as a blessing. It is a sorrow. But with the coming of the kingdom of heaven, mourning becomes a blessing because the mourners will be comforted. Amen. Praise God. The implication is that God himself will do the comforting. Praise God. The affliction of mourning becomes the blessing of profound relationship with God. That is a blessing indeed. Praise God. Although the primary purpose of the Beatitudes is to declare the blessings given by God's kingdom, most scholars also regard them as painting a picture of the character of that kingdom. Amen. As we step into God's kingdom, we hope to become more like those named as blessed more meek, more merciful, more hungry for righteousness, more apt to make peace, and so on. This gives the Beatitudes a moral imperative. Amen. Later, when Jesus says, make disciples of all nations, hallelujah, the Beatitudes describe the character these disciples are meant to take on. The Beatitudes describe the character of God's kingdom, but they are not conditions of salvation. Jesus does not say, for example, only the pure in heart may enter the kingdom of, in, of heaven. Hallelujah. Now that is a good illustration to make. Amen. And that is actually, you know, enlightening to me because I always thought that this gave a, 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 a dynamic, uh, um, meta, it was a metaphor but it also gave a reciprocal. It gave a statement uh, that logically you would think that he said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So you would think that if Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God, then the reciprocal or the opposite of that, uh, the opposite of that would apply to those who weren't pure in heart. That Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So that automatically should mean that those who are not pure in heart will not see God. And you would think that, but we see here that the Beatitudes are speaking about a specific state of blessing, of blessed hearts, of blessed souls and blessed minds that already exist. Amen. And, and Jesus is blessing them even more so. Amen. Praise God. And he's making a declaration of their present state of blessing. Amen. The ones who have these specific attributes or these specific character traits. Amen. Praise God. Now, listen to this illusion that the expositor makes. Amen. And um, 
I will quickly move on and close. Amen. Everyone. Okay, no, excuse me. This is good news because the Beatitudes are impossibly hard to fulfill. Amen. Given that Jesus says everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Hallelujah. Who could truly be pure in heart? Amen. Praise God. So if we're if it were not for God's grace, no one would actually be blessed. The Beatitudes are not a judgment against all who fail to measure up. Instead, they are a blessing for any who consent to join themselves to God's kingdom as it comes near. Amen. Amen. So we we must understand that John the Baptist made a statement that the kingdom of God is at hand. Mercy on legs, mercy on feet, mercy with hands, feet, and a mouth literally came. Grace and mercy are taken human form in the person of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God literally is at hand when God stepped into the earth as the person of Jesus Christ. He is the grace. He is the mercy. And he is risen. And he is Lord. And he is Lord. has risen from the dead and he is Lord every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. One more time. And he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. That's all it's about. That's all it's about. Jesus Christ being Lord. His mercy, his grace, his blessing. Amen. Well, we have discussed the first 16 verses of the fifth chapter of Matthew. Hallelujah. The Beatitudes. Amen. Now, hallelujah, we're going to close and we will get back later on as we go into the 18th through the 48th verses of the 5th chapter of Matthew. Hallelujah. May God richly bless you and shine upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank each and every one of you for everything that you do and everything that you are. I love you. I love you with God's love. I thank God for us being in this time stream together, breathing and enjoying the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living all together all together hallelujah and it's all about love i wish i wish i could express to you each and every one of you how much i love you my brothers and my sisters hallelujah in christ my spiritual mothers my spiritual children my my family of god everybody that supports me and everybody who doesn't support me and everybody who loves me and everybody who doesn't i still love you 
I still love you. Hallelujah. Because I've been born again and I'm not the same. And I and I and I love Jesus and Jesus is love. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. I love you. Have a good day.